if I powdered the wood, for example, which I've done here, let's just see if we can make the reaction go a little bit faster and see if we produce more light. All right, we need the lights down for this. Ready? One, two, three. All right. Well, that's pretty fast and, and produced much more light, as you see. Well, it didn't last very long. Can you do better than that and make a bright light which lasts longer? You can't easily, but I can, because what I've done is now soak this piece of wood in liquid oxygen. And liquid oxygen has now diffused right through the wood, so it should burn all the way through, and with any luck should now produce a brighter light. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to get a good going. There we go. So, I always feel like the Statue of Liberty when I do this. <laughs> uh, we can put it out under water if we're lucky. Uh, yes, it did go out. We, actually, it should be. Let's see if we can still burn it. Where's the matches? Uh, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves here. Yeah? Even though it was underwater, it ought to. Uh, it ought to still be combustible. Let's see if we can start it off again. Come on, you can do it. Should be plenty of oxygen there. Well, there we go. Yeah, it's burning from the inside where the water wasn't. And we'll actually continue to... produce quite interesting flames and produce enough light to be able to walk around with. So, this kind of produ production of light is, is through combustion and is what we used until relatively recently in man's history. Well, I'm going to put it out because I don't want to send smoke alarms off. Oh, that's what I wanted it to do before. And If <laughs> you put the lights down, we probably see it's still glowing, can we? It'll go out eventually, so we'll be all right. Well, now, what's the fastest we can make a chemical reaction go? Uh, the answer is if you have an intimate mixture of molecules. So I thought I'd just show you one chemical reaction which does that. Uh, this will produce light of a particular color for a very brief moment of time. So let's just look at that. I'm going to put these on to do this. Uh, I'm going to mix the, these are just very simple gases which I'm going to ignite. Belt and braces here, right, one, two, three. <laughs> <All right. coughs> now, if you look carefully, <coughs> you would have seen a sheet of blue flame came out of, came out of there. <clears throat> and that was uh, <clears throat> a kind of light which is chemical light. It's called chemiluminescence, chemical light. And you can produce chemical light just by mixing wet chemicals rather than gases. And so I've got some wet chemicals here, which uh, if I mix, I ought to be able to produce light. And if you were a firefly, you'd be extremely interested in this because this would be how you find your mate. All right. Are we ready? One, two, three... Just mix the two together. Now, fireflies do it very efficiently and produce quite a strong, bright light. It's only the female that produces the light. They, they don't produce a continuous signal. They produce a pulsed signal. I always have to learn in front of a children's audience not to say that the insects flash. Uh, <laughs> but that's what they do. Right, that's chemical light. Now, in case you weren't terribly impressed by that, I brought some of these commercial versions along, and here I just have to mix two chemicals by breaking a glass file inside, and I should be able to produce some rather efficient chemical light. And there's one which I can put there somewhere. Here's a nice blue one which can go right out there somewhere. There's another yellow one there. And there's a nice bright red one. If I throw it, can people catch it? Right out there somewhere, okay. Uh, I'm afraid I'm so feeble I can't reach the back, so you'll have to come and have a look later. All right, lights up. <clears throat> this is a chemical, uh, a molecule, which 
It looks colourless, it looks like water, which means it's not absorbing any of the light that we can see. It does, in, in fact, absorb ultraviolet light. But if we're lucky, it'll give out a light, it'll emit a light, give the energy back out again, uh, at a different wavelength, at a longer wavelength, less energy, and so, with any luck, we should be able to see a colour. Now, I think you can. If I use an ultraviolet lamp, can you see it's a rather nice blue fluorescence? Uh, you can get just about any colour fluorescence you want. And I've got, these are just laser dyes that we use in our laboratory. So we have the lights back down again. You see there are all kinds of coloured fluorescences. Of course, you're very familiar with these because, um, I mean, here's just some card that you might use in your classroom, for example, which, which is nicely fluorescent. You can get clothing which is fluorescent for safety reasons. Uh, all kinds of things fluoresce. It's a very common uh, phenomenon. Well, I'm going to show you some fluorescence in a particular way, an experiment I, demonstration I like doing. Um, <laughs> I've got here something which you will all have, most of you will have in your homes. Maybe you don't realize that this is a beautifully fluorescent material. Can you see the tonic water fluoresces quite strongly? That's because it has quinine in it. Now, you probably know, if you've ever studied any chemistry, that Chemists make things by mixing things, and so I'm going to take solution T, as it's called. <coughs> and just to show you that this isn't a cheat, I'm not, it's not a dye stuff, it's the real stuff. I'm going to pour some out and drink it in front of you. But if you will forgive me, and it's, well, it's midday, yes, so we're all right. I'm going to add to it solution G, uh, which... <laughs> doesn't fluoresce, but renders the mixture palatable, you understand. <laughs> well, I hope you have a very enjoyable day here today. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>